Shall we bring them on that for last today? From LA, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, see, I remember that. Jai Dhamma Dhava Kunja Bihari
Raja Kajari Ashtra Trishatra Shri Shri Mahdi Sivayan Gari Sesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishwapad Paramam Sapari Raja Kajari Ashtra Trishatra Shri Shri Mahdi Bhakti Vedanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Shri Mahdi Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai All glories to assembled devotees All glories to assembled devotees All glories to assembled devotees Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya All right, uh, let's uh, turn ourselves. If you have a Gita, could, could you pass that Gita? Thank you so much. Um, so once you get your Gita, uh, if it's hard bound on page 147, we'll start with text 10 in chapter 3. Chapter 3 is entitled Karma Yoga. Hundred forty seven in the hardbound edition. Chapter three, text ten. Okay, are we uh, more or less situated? Sahayagya Prajashrishtva. Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prasavishyadvam Esha Vostvishta Kamaduk Sahayagya Prajashrishtva Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prasavishyadvam Esho Vostvishta Kamaduk Sahayagya Prajashrishtva Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prasa Vishyadam Esha Vostvishta Kamaduk You got it in here? Okay. I was going to ask you to chant the verse. Anyways, okay. Anyone would like to chant the verse? Number 10. Go ahead. Sahayagya Prajashrishtva Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prashavishyadvam Esha Vaushvishta Kamaduk. Anyone else would like to chant the verse? Sahayagya Prajashrishtva. Puro Vacha Prajapati. Anena Prasha Vishyadvam. Esha Vaushvishta Kamaduk. Maybe one last person can chant the verse. It's very nice to hear and follow, not just lead. So if someone else wants to lead. Sahayagya Prajashrishtva Puro Vacha Prajapati Anena Prasavishyadvam Esha Vasvishta Kamaduk Thank you. We'll go through the word for word together now. Saha, along with, yajyaha, sacrifices, prajaha, generations, shrishtva, creating, pura, anciently, uvacha, said, prajapatihi, the lord of creatures, Anena, by this, prasavishyadvam, be more and more prosperous. Eshaha, this, vaha, 
your, your. Us, too. us too let it be, it be. Ishta. ishta of all desirable things, things. kamaduk Kama bestower his divine grace Shila Prabhupada's translation and purport we can read it phrase by phrase together you can repeat after me and then I'll read the whole thing at the end in the beginning of creation the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and blessed them by saying be thou happy with this yag- by this yagya sacrifice because its performance will bestow upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Purport. The material, uh, I'll, read, I'll read it again actually. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of all creatures sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this yagya, sacrifice, because its performance will bestow you, upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The material creation by the Lord of creatures, Vishnu, is a chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to Godhead. All living entities within the material, the material creation are conditioned by material nature because of their forgetfulness of their relationship to Vishnu or Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Vedic principles are to help us understand this et- eternal relation as it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedya. The Lord says that the purpose of the Vedas is to understand Him. In the Vedic hymns it is said, Patim Bishvasyat Meshvaram. Therefore, the Lord of the living entities is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also, in the second canto, chapter 4, verse 20, Srila Shukadeva Goswami describes the Lord as Pati in so many ways. And this meter is a little bit difficult for me. But, um, yeah, do you know the meter? No, it's just what we I, I think there's, but there's, there's one meeting, meter that I'm trying to remember. It's, it's, it comes in the second chapter of the Bhagavatam also. Pati praja patir diyam patir loka patir dara patihi Patir gatis chandaka vrishni satvatam prasidatam me bhagavan satam patihi Thank you, Prabhu. That was very helpful, actually. I, it's funny because actually the last time I came here, I spoke about that verse, 15.15. So anyways, the meter is in my head. The Prajapati is Lord Vishnu, and he is the Lord of all living creatures, all worlds, and all beauties, and the protector of everyone. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned souls to learn how to perform yajyas, sacrifices, for the satisfaction of Vishnu, so that while in the material world they can live very comfortably without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. By performance of yajya, the conditioned souls gradually become Krishna consciousness and become godly in all respects. In the age of Kali, the Sankirtan Yagya, the chanting of the names of God, is recommended by the Vedic scriptures, and this transcendental system was introduced by Lord Chaitanya for the deliverance of all men in this age. Sankirtan Yagya and Krishna consciousness go well together. Lord Krishna in his devotional form as Lord Chaitanya is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto, chapter 5, verse 32, as follows, with special reference to the Sankirtan Yagya. Krishna Varnam Tvisha Krishnam Sangopangastra Parshadam Yajay Sankirtana Prayar Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. In this age of Kali, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord, who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yajna. Other yajyas prescribed in the Vedic literatures are not easy to perform in this age of Kali, but the Sankirtan Yajna is easy and sublime for all purposes. 
as recommended in Bhagavad Gita also, chapter 9, verse 14. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. So, um, very fortuitously, I've decided to speak about the Sankirtan Yagya at the exact same time that a blissful Harinam Sankirtan party is chanting at Pacific Beach and distributing books to the, to the masses, Pacific Beach. So we can think of them and, and glorify them as they're doing that service while we think about the Sankirtan Yagya and how it's described, among other yagyas, as, as beautiful sacrifices that will connect us with God in this text by Krishna. So, at the beginning of the purport, Prabhupada reminds us that the material creation is not a permanent punishment. Um, we do understand it to be a punishment. Sometimes we call it a correctional facility, going to the material world. That you know, We come down from the spiritual world and then we land here, only to experience at least some dose of you know, the misery that is to be felt here in order to understand better how we need to reconnect with Krishna, our original and eternal master. So it's all temporary. Um, and of course, many people upon hearing that the material creation and, and the material world are temporary will feel lamentation. They'll, oh no, my Porsche is going to, you know, go somewhere someday, be destroyed, be impounded, whatever, be sold off. Even my house will be de demolished someday. Someday. All, all those things are temporary. All those things are temporary. And, and, people, and people do lament about that because they're very attached. But actually for devotees, we can, um, we can rejoice upon hearing this good news that the material creation is temporary. And our time in it should also be temporary, but that's not a guarantee. It requires some work. We can stay on this earth or in these various material planets, systems, for thousands of births if we wish to, and certainly we have already. We've already done that. We tried it out. And somehow we've taken this human form of life now. So, you know, we've done our cycles as cockroaches, donkeys, whatever else. <laughs> you know, we, we've been cycling upwards. That's what happens typically, right? Is, you know, some, some being falls into a, a very kind of low form of life animal, but then luckily because the animal doesn't... Re you know, incur so much sinful reaction because it doesn't have consciousness like we do. The animal is gradually promoted as a, as a favor from the Supreme Lord. And eventually, we come to this human platform of life. And we have consciousness again. Really advanced consciousness. Although it doesn't seem that way when you look at some people. And... That's a, that's a major responsibility. Um, the, that responsibility that comes with this consciousness is, I would say, not to do any particular action, depending on the time that you appear or whatever, but what is important is to be inquisitive and to... Um, to seek, seek spiritual knowledge, seek, seek the absolute truth. And, ho and however you can connect to God or the absolute truth or, or you know, etc., Krishna, um, then you should do that. But for each and every person in this room, there is a different way that we all connect with Krishna. But that, that's also beautiful, actually, because we have different propensities and different talents and different personalities also. Some of us are, you know, a little more um, 
playful and some are a little more serious and, and, and so on. And so some people get to play with Krishna and have that playful relationship with Krishna and some people get to be more a, a more serious servant of Krishna and some people get to, to be a mother to Krishna. Not just Vaishnavis, by the way. Anyone can have a parental relationship with Krishna. I mean, it's, it's actually very beautiful for anyone to have these really nice feminine qualities. Anyways, um, the, Sup the Supreme Lord is so merciful that he has expanded himself in so many different ways to accommodate the variety in the material creation. All of this interaction that we have with Krishna is lila, pastimes. We say pastimes, lila, right? So, you know, we, we don't have to... Um, Krishna didn't have to have us interact with him like this. In fact, he didn't have to create humans or indeed living entities at all. But the whole point is, is Krishna likes to enjoy lila, pastimes, with his devotees. And just like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, so many eternal associates of Krishna that are always with Krishna whenever he descends anywhere are, are, are spoken about. And they're, and they're you know, very beautiful eternal associates like Jai and Vijay or, or you know, of course, Radharani, etc. Those are, those are eternal associates of Krishna. And they have their different relationships with Krishna. But we can also think of ourselves as eternal associates of Krishna in the sense that you can't get rid of him. He's always inside you. And in this purport, it's mentioned again, right, that, that very famous verse, 1515, you know, Sarvasya Cha Meva. So, and we, and we actually talked last time I was here about how everyone's always talking about this verse. Why is everyone always talking about this verse? Because it, it's one of the most beautiful truths presented in the Gita, that Krishna is always inside your heart, whether you like it or not. You can't get rid of him. So many people spend so many births trying to avoid God, trying to run away from God. They try. I mean, they try really hard. <laughs> but he always makes you come back to him. And one of the reasons that is, is that we understand that any separation we we feel from Krishna is reciprocated ten times, maybe more, from Krishna to us. Have any of you ever felt like you, you missed like a family member or something? You were away from home from a long, for a long time and you were like, wow, like I, I wish I could see that person, you know. So that attachment that we have to that family member, whoever it is, you know, that, that is a, a reflection of the separation that devotees feel from Krishna in the spiritual world. I mean, reflection, but like, reflection, on, but the mirror is only like this big, you know, and we only get a little glimpse. And whatever the devotees are feeling, even in the spiritual world, Krishna feels that ten times more. Because he's, he's, he's the ultimate lover of his devotees, of everyone. And, and I think when we understand that, it's a lot easier to develop in our heart um, sincerity in our love and separation for Krishna. Because many people say, well, you know, how do I develop love for Krishna? I mean, I, I've, I've heard these... You know, I've heard all these Bhagavad Gita classes and Bhagavatam classes, and I mean, I really like Krishna, but you know, I don't know about if I love him, and you know, so on. But when we understand how much Krishna loves us, or try to understand, it's kind of impossible to fully conceive. But if we try to understand how much Krishna loves us, you know, so much more separation he is feeling than what we are feeling then we can start to more sincerely pray and, and, um, and depend on him. Of course, we can, be, we can have parental affection for Krishna, but we can also approach him like a baby. <laughs> you know, it's said that when we're feeling very helpless and very, very much separated from Krishna, one thing to do is just to call out like a baby calls out for the mother, completely helpless, 
just say, you know, I depend on you alone. We have one devotee in ISKCON who, uh, Janavi Harrison, Janavi Jivana Devi Dasi, and uh, her grace has produced a lot of songs, really nice bhajans in English and also in, in Bengali and Sanskrit. There's one called Gajendra. Anyways, there's a lot, a lot of recent songs actually, but one lyric is, I, you know, I depend on you alone. So it's like, you know, moving towards that frame of mind that even if we don't fully understand how, you know, how much our soul is missing Krishna and how much, how separated we are from Krishna and so on, even if we don't fully understand, then at least we can cry out and say, I just don't understand, but please give me clarity. That inquisitiveness, that, just, that desire to just, I want to know you. I want to know you in a more intimate way. That, that's something that, um, you know, it, it will really transform your spiritual life, experiencing that, that helplessness, material rock bottom. So many devotees came to this movement in Srila Prabhupada's time, and even today they continue to come from like, basically hell on earth. I mean, like, really poor material condition. You know, there were like the hippies, the LSD addicts and stuff. I mean, I guess maybe they thought they were pretty happy, but they were in a pretty miserable condition. And other people, you know, were just, I mean, really people just kind of came off the street, you know? And they showed up at the temple somehow or, somehow or another. Srila Prabhupada empowered so many souls that were truly in, in material desperation to come meet Krishna. And that's actually, you could probably say that those people probably, it's easier for them to become a devotee because they're already so uncomfortable and they, you know, they just, they understand like I'm helpless. I just, I need, I need something because this material thing is not working out for me. So they already get it. But, you know, we who are a little bit more comfortable and, you know, have nice, you know, beds with mattresses and so on and uh, a roof above our head and nice, you know, nice um, bogue to cook and offer all the time. And so, you know, I mean, we're a little bit more fortunate materially, which is why, uh, why we have to work extra hard at developing that spiritual... Um, desperation but um, it's certainly possible to experience these feelings but humility is a really important quality to develop to to move in that direction also and um, yeah I mean I was hearing a talk this morning and also last night in Chula Vista at the there's a preaching program that the temple does in Chula Vista on Friday nights. It's really nice. They bring kirtan and, and a, a short talk to that community. It's actually very beautiful. Anyways, His Grace Balaram Prabhu was speaking in that, uh, in that program last night and then also this morning about how Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said we have to beat our mind every morning and every evening also to stay humble, to remind ourselves that, you know, the best thing to do is just be servant of the servant of the servant. And indeed, this is confirmed by all previous acharyas, all previous acharyas, who, you know, say, you know, we, we say in the Tulsi Arti song in the morning, Seva adhikara diye koro nicha dasi, make me your dasi, your maidservant. It's like, if you could just walk up to someone on the street and you say, how would you like to be a maidservant? <laughs> what are you talking about? It sounds terrible. <laughs> but actually it's our ultimate pleasure to be, you know, Vrinda Dasi, Krishna Das, etc. To be a maidservant in Goloka is like, there's nothing better. Um, and also we have so many bhajans that remind us about this quality of humility and how important it is. 
I mean, I, I love all these different bhajans from the acharyas that, that they, they show such a beautiful example of humility. What's that song by Nartam Das Thakur that you know, it says, I, I'm, I should be first in line because I'm the most fallen to Mahaprabhu. Or even Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes the Amar Jivan, right? Amar Jivan Sadapa Perata Nahiko Punyera Lesha I'm an impious sinner. I'm so fallen. He's, he's, telling, he's telling Krishna, I'm so fallen, I'm an impious sinner. Of course, he's setting an example for us. He's not an impious sinner. But actually, a very advanced devotee will feel more fallen than a neophyte devotee. Because they understand what, what a distance... They understand better the distance that is between us and Krishna. Tyler, can you give me that little clock? You have about 10 minutes. Okay, all right. Anyways, um, so, so they, they understand that, um, that distance and that difference between you know, that separation that we have from Krishna. And that's, that, that is the, the mark of an advanced devotee. It's said that there's like, in one system of classification, there's three um, levels of devotees. There's a Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari, and then Uttama Adhikari, Uttama, the highest. So, an Uttama Adhikari highest adhikar. Those people, it's said, they won't be able to tell who is a neophyte and who is an advanced devotee. They won't even be able to tell. Because they have so much heart, love in their heart, and so much humility also. They just see everyone around them as like a paramahamsa, pure devotee of Krishna. They're so like, you know, essentially blinded by their love of Krishna and their humility. So anyways, that's, that's why they say sometimes that the best thing to have for a guru is a Madhyama Adhikari because the Uttama Adhikari won't give you any instructions because they think you're a Paramahamsa even when you meet them, when you're totally fallen. So, but, but, th but that is the, you know, that is the most advanced stage of devotional life. When we just totally all these material desires fade away. Everything just gone. And, and, and there's only Krishna. And when you see other living entities, we see them also just as Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. That's all you see in someone else. Not like, oh, like, he is wearing jeans, he is wearing dhoti, he is wearing a vest. No. It's all so it's all external. It's all external. It all fades away when you reach that stage. I'll let you know when I get there. I'm pretty far off. <laughs> um, but doesn't that sound beautiful? So that's something that we can aspire for. And Srila Prabhupada has given so many instructions at various times saying that, you know, um, It's possible in this life. It's not like, okay, like let me make a little bit of progress in this birth, and I get to the next birth, and then I'll try a little bit, and I'll climb up. It's not like that. It's not stairs. It's an elevator. But it's elevator from floor one to floor 100,000. No stops. No stopping at floor 50, 100, 150. And in this, and there's a process that will get us there in every yuga. The yuga dharma. So, anyway, it's getting back to the point of the verse. There's a yuga dharma. There's a yajna that we should perform in every yuga. That's like the secret. You know, some elevators you have to like uh, fla like flash a card, swipe a card to make the elevator work. So that's the yuga dharma in this in this metaphorical elevator. So in the Satya Yuga elevator, you have to chant Om for a hundred thousand years without interruption. <laughs> so that's a little bit hard. And then, and then in the next Yuga, we have fire, performance of fire sacrifices. Massive fire sacrifices. When, we, they, when they talk about Tretya Yuga, fire sacrifices, they're not talking about like, 
you know, small fire sacrifice we see in the temple that, you know, Dainiri Prabhu is performing. That's, like, that's our Kali Yuga version. No, like, thousands of pounds of ghee and rice, you know, Yagya Shala, like, bigger than, you know, this whole building, roaring fire. Okay, so it's a little bit difficult now, right? <laughs> so Krishna gives another option. Then in the next yuga, when people are even a little bit more fun, they say, okay, well, you can do deity worship. You don't need a fire the size of a building. You can go at just one altar, nice altar. But, you know, in that yuga, there was a lot more elaborate jewels and things, and, and we were able to do much more elaborate worship of the deity. So that was a yuga dharma in that elevator, that yuga. Just, you know perform arti and dress the deity and so on, that, that rasa. And then, uh, here we are. We didn't do our meditation properly in Satya Yuga. We didn't do our fire sacrifices properly <laughs> in Treta Yuga. In Dwapara Yuga, we didn't even do deity worship properly. So we're still here on this planet, and it's Kali Yuga now. And... All bets are off. We have one last chance. One last option. And that's chanting the holy name of Krishna, the holy name of the Lord. That's it. We gave up all our other options. Krishna has so many options he's given us. We, you know, for whatever reason, we didn't partake. We didn't partake fully. And now we have to chant the holy name of the Lord because that's that's the secret passcode to go up this Kali Yuga elevator. And it's so much easier than all of those previous things that each and every one of us, at least that are present and hearing instructions, sorry, here, here and present and hearing instructions about the Holy Name, have no excuse not to engage. So we take vows, because even in Kali Yuga, even if we say, okay, I heard this instruction, I'll do it then, you know, what is the promise to the self? So we promise someone else. You know, it's, much, it's much easier when you promise someone else to keep a vow than when you just internally promise to yourself. So we make vows to chant. Harinam eva kevalam. It's the only way. And, and we have to, you know, we have to follow through no matter the circumstances. Sometimes we have to do our rounds during Gita class. We have to. Make sure it you know, finishes by the end of the day. Because there's no other alternative. Everything, everything has been taken off the table. It's the only item on the menu. The Holy Name. And the Holy Name has so many manifestations, and it's so merciful that there's no qualification for anyone to chant the Holy Name. You know, you don't have to be a Brahmin or a sannyasi or whatever. You just have to do it. And, and, you know, there are so many kind of, you know, uh, motivational speakers you can listen to who will try and motivate you and they, will, and they will, you know, say, oh, well, this is a tactic to, you know, motivate yourself and this is how you motivate yourself. And, and, and that's nice if that's what you need. But at the end of the day, we just have to accept it's mandatory. There's no other choice. Chanting the Holy Name is the only way we can go back to Godhead for sure. means maybe there are some other things we could do if we're really, really expert at them. Maybe. But the Holy Name is like a sure thing. Straight ticket. First class. Go to Goloka. So, you know, the, the keeping of... Uh, the accountability of, of our sadhana and, and, and the performance of it in that way is, uh, is very nice. It's recommended when we're chanting the holy name. And um, yeah, it's actually very important to count also what you're doing, to keep track. Um, because otherwise we can very easily get waylaid and become whimsical because the mind controls us in some ways. So if we can count our spiritual practice and perform it, engage in the holy name, just 
you know, permanently engage in the holy name as much as we can, as much, as much as we can, then, you know, there will be victory. Your life will be sublime. There, there's one devotee in Los Angeles that I, I'm acquainted with, and he's a disciple of His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. And he got the opportunity to speak to His Divine Grace when he was on the planet. He asked him a question about, just, you know, Srila Prabhupada, what should I do, you know, what, how should I be living my life, so on. You know, it's kind of a nice question. He gets the opportunity to meet his spiritual master after so long, and he just, do you have any instructions for me, just anything? And all Srila Prabhupada said is, go on performing the Sankirtan Yajna and your life will be victorious. Jai. So the instruction is there. It's very clear and it's very simple. And it's very easy. You know, we just have to pull out our bead bag and do it. Any complaints, questions, excuses for why we shouldn't chant? All right, uh, hearing no discussion, we can end here. Thank you very much, everyone, for the nice welcome. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Thank you very much for telling us about Prabhu. We'll have a